As far as sex, sex reproduction, bryophytes are very limited, aren't they? I mean, basically, if I'm a moss plant, I want to have sex, I'm basically stuck to like two feet. Okay, maybe if that's how it works if I'm a moss plant. All right? I'm not going to have sex with a moss plant that's a block over on somebody's roof, am I? Get it? Very limited. Okay? That's why there's not a lot of different types of bryophytes. Remember, sex increases variation. There's only like 40 or 50 different types of bryophytes. Okay. Now let's go to gymnosperms. Gymnosperms have a little bit more evolved way to have sex. They have these structures known as combs. And you've all seen combs. All right, you've got male cones and you have female cones. Male cones, <coughs> female cones. And we'll just stick with pine trees and spruce trees. Um, but you typically in the spring, the male cones start spewing out pollen. You know, typically around April, May, actually a little but around April usually, kids start walking around here and half of them got allergies because of all the pollen that's being spewed out by not just pine trees, but a lot of these trees, right? Um, what pollen uses, actually I'll put this here, what, is, what do bryophytes need? They need water to spread their gametes. Gymnosperms use the wind. Let's say that here's a, here's a female cone. If the wind happens to be blowing the right way, right, the chances are some of this pollen is going to end up on that female colon. And yeehaw, seeds will be produced. So, see that big old white pine? Straight out that window. That white pine over there could actually have sex with the white pines over by the water tower. That white pine could have sex with white pines across Muskegon Lake. Or white pines across Bear Lake. Or even if the wind's blowing real hard one day, the pollen could get brought all the way over towards those white pines over by Lake Michigan. So compare the radius, right? If you're a bryophyte, you got maybe like two feet of potential sexual partners, don't you? If you're a gymnosperm, you got miles and miles that would have potential sexual partners. Okay? So gymnosperms evolved a little bit better way to increase their chances of having sex, haven't they? Wind dispersal of their pollen. Independent of water. So it's kind of a big thing. And so you do have thousands of gymnosperm species that eventually evolve from all that genetic variation, all that crossing over independent assortment type stuff. Okay? Now, what about angiosperms? Well, angiosperms Their reproductive uh, game plan makes use of, somebody already said it, pollinators. And they also use the wind. How they do it flower, there's a flower, here's the stigma, here's an anther, try and keep it semi-simple here. Pollen is brought right to the flower, directly, by pollinators, aren't they? And there's all kinds of different types of pollinators, there's bats, there's birds, there's bees, there's squirrels, there's chipmunks. Hopefully you can see 
very efficient. They don't have to just throw pollen up in the air and hope that it gets to a flower. They just make pollen and keep it right here. And they wait for a pollinator to come up and brush up against it. And they bring the pollen directly to another flower. They can have sex with flowers for miles around. Hundreds of miles around sometimes, depending on if it's like a bird or something, you know, they have to brush up against the pollen sacks and you know go from Indiana to Ohio or something. Who knows? So at this at this uh, current time in our in our world's history, angiosperms have the best way to have sex. As a direct result, there's over a hundred and eighty thousand different species of angiosperms right now. It's a lot. Okay? So, you know, short of growing legs and walking around looking for sexual partners, plants, and the specific angiosperm plants, have a really nice way, really efficient way, to produce a low amount of, of pollen and still have a lot of fertilization take place. Okay? So they win. Angiosperms are winning, in the words of Charlie Sheen. They win, they're winning. Questions there? Okay, now here's uh, the main points, and we'll get into some video and some animation and stuff here. flowers develop into? Please raise your hand if you can tell me. Mr. Joson, Johnson. Flowers are fertilized. They turn into other flowers. No, they do not. Why? <clears throat> Summer. You're, you skipped a step. You're there, though. You're in the ballpark. Brine grass. All fertilized flowers develop into what? Pollen. You guys don't know this. How can you be 16 years old and not know this? 15. Marissa? Yes! Fruit! Why? I can eat a fruit. Let that sink in, please. For me? And. To Summer's point, to Summer's point, all fruit, if it's a fruit, it contains seeds. seeds. Tomatoes. Tomatoes are a fruit. Who said, who said that they turn into fruit? What kind Let of that fruit? sink in for a second, please. There should be questions popping into your brains. All fruits at one time for a flower. Anything that has a seed in it is a fruit. Questions? Summer. All flowers that are fertilized turn into fruit. Any questions there, Summer? Name one. Okay, you haven't said Christina's idea. Christina, you might use this wrong. Okay, yeah. Do you mean they all turn into like literal fruits? Yes. Let me show you what rose fruits look like. Strawberries? 
There's a rose fruit. 